5th of July and it's a very dry, dusty sort of weather and here we are in the uh, vegetable garden which Julia has been caring for. I don't think I've done a stroke of work here or hardly have I. Right, at the intersection between the, the spring and the summer work we've harvested a lot of our overwintered vegetables. The garlic which we showed you has all been pulled. The shallots are over there drying. I don't know if you can see them. All in a moment, yeah. The overwintered onions are just up there. They're just drying off in the sun and a few of the elephant garlic. We've also used all of our overwintered broad beans and they were becoming very bad with black fly and dehydrated so we podded all of them off and put all the home. Well, the black bean home is between the This is the, potatoes. sorry to interrupt, this is the overwintered onions. Yes. So we're, we've already started eating these. They are. So so they're, they're a good size because we had a lot of rain during the winter and so they've developed well. But behind you, Steve, are the main crop onions which are going to be very small. Remember, we had to water them two or three times just to keep them alive. They're not going to get very big bulbs, but if we don't add any more water now, we will get a crop from this land. Although, if we could irrigate it thoroughly, we'd get larger bulbs. Now, where we've taken out the overwintered crops and the early vegetables, we've put in more crops. So, for example, either side of the overwintered onions, there's two rows of leeks which we put in a small plant. They're quite widely spaced. I mean, wide spacing is one of the secrets of getting yeah, large size. Yeah, leeks do get it? quite big. The other thing that we've then put in between the overwintered garlic are rows of carrots, which we put in as seed. And we've sown these successionally, so we're getting uh, these carrots, carrots throughout. Well, we could probably really start pulling some of these for salads now. Yeah. And then where the lines are, there's some more seed just gone in as we've taken out the last of those. We've also got some spring onions, so we're keeping a rotation so the carrots and onions are still within this area. So these carrots, these leaves are about a foot tall, and these are probably because we start eating some of these. Here are some which have just been sown and have not yet come up, that's right. and over there are some smaller ones. Yes, and the so spring onions, beyond them the shallots which I've planted. So this is a principle of successional planting, you can't do it with all plants, but with carrots, eat those first, eat those next, and these ones that come up will probably be for the winter. Where we've had clean ground, we want to get it planted up again quickly to make the most of clean ground. But I've gone for wide spacing, not just to get a good size of vegetables, but because we're so short of water now, and we're now having to water our vegetables. And this is what? That is a leek that has been allowed to go to flower and then to seed, because the bees will love it, and then we can save the seed from it for next year. Poppies. And that's a poppy that I just grow because I love them. Yeah, well, what's the point, you know, if you can't do things that you enjoy them? The other thing that we've got coming on, you may be able to see at the top there, Steve, are the French beans and beetroots and lettuce. It's our, it's our salad area. French beans are doing really well in this piece, although they're needing a bit of water. They're beginning to come into flower now. And they're a much better bet than nana beans. Nana beans need a lot more water, and I wouldn't bother to put them in here now in these conditions. I don't see any actual beans. So. No, they're just, just okay. budding flowers now. There's a few flowers on that row which were in oh, the yeah. You might see some baby beans in there. They're the Borlotti beans, the speckly. It's still worth putting some more in, isn't it? Well, I've French beans, more, although look, water a, is an issue. Baby bean. There, now, I've watered these two days ago. They're going to need watering at least once a week now if we don't get any more rain. Some lettuce. Some lettuce and some self sown spinach, which I'm leaving because that. Sorry. French that beans. Spinach will do in the drought, that's okay. These are beetroots. Different lettuces. lettuce. Beetroot, more lettuce. Main crop potatoes. French beans. We've been digging the new potatoes. They've been very tasty but very small and the plants are beginning to die back so I've cleared most of those out. These are our main crop which are not wonderful. We're going to get some spuds off them but not very big. And uh, what's this over here? And then this is pumpkins and courgettes which love the heat. They're in the heavily mulched area, which is still nice and moist under the cardboard. I've watered the plants in, and I've watered them once or twice. They probably won't need watering again now, they haven't got Pumpkins. Okay. And and cabbages. Where the early broad beans came out, we've got successional cabbages. And these are netted. Yes, pigeons will eat them, pheasants will eat them, almost anything will eat What's them. What's that? Right. That's, that's central, um, that's been eaten now, isn't it? Yeah, that's the... Butterfly, white cabbage butterfly, which if you don't net your cabbages, the birds will eat the caterpillars. But then if you don't net your, if you net your cabbages, it's a struggle, isn't it? 
Okay, and here are the climbing, climbing beans. French beans. Climbing French beans. Um, okay, so that's just a look at the uh, vegetable patch in um, the first week of a very, very hot and dry July.